Hello and welcome to video tutorial number six, part two. Uh, welcome back if you've just watched part one. In part one, I did a very high level overview of what object storage is, and I identified three things that I was going to cover today. So in part two now, we're going to create the virtual machine and create some object storage. So. Uh, we've already seen in one of the previous tutorials uh, how to create a virtual machine from an image. So I'm going to go in and manage those images again. So from a flex image, and I think I still have one. Yeah, I created a standard LAMP server. So I am now going to order a monthly virtual server based on that LAMP image that we created in a previous tutorial. So it's just asking me to log in again. So I'll do that very quickly okay so here's our order page Okay, virtual server based on our lamp image. We just want one of them. I'm going to put it in Amsterdam as well. Um, compute, RAM, disk, that's fine. I think everything else is absolutely standard. Continue with that. It's now going to ask me for the host name. Yep, there we go. So just give it a host name. Um, That's it. Terms, order. Hopefully I've got that right and that will create a virtual server for us. There's our receipt. Excellent, I've just had the email through telling me that I've now ordered that and if we go to our device list, possibly do a refresh again we should see, there it is. So that's fine. So we now have a virtual machine being created. While that's being created, let's order some object storage as well. So here are all the uh, data centers available from um, software. So I already have some uh, object storage in Amsterdam, I believe. Yep. I have some WebSphere application server files in there. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go back to object storage and we're going to create a brand new object storage instance in, yeah, let's choose Dallas, why not? So DAL05 is the cluster. We've got none there at the moment, so let's just add a container. It's that simple. Uh, let's call this uh, tutorial six. There it is. It is that simple. That's our object storage. It's there. Um, we can go in and have a look at that. There's no content. We can add some files to that. So I could uh, select some files from my local hard drive. Um, so let me go to downloads. What have I got in here? Um, oh, I've got the CyberDoc image. Yeah. I open that. I'll add that file. There it is. It's now in our object storage. So we've put a simple CyberDuck icon uh, image file that I had in my downloads area onto our object storage and our device will be ready pretty quickly. Um, it's still in the process. It's just loading the gold image at the moment from our flex machine. So that'll be absolutely fine. Once that's up and running, so I'm gonna pause the video here. I'm gonna pick it up from when we can actually log on to Sassify 3 and then I'm going to cover the first part of linking our object storage to our virtual machine using CloudFuse. Thanks very much. So here we are back again. Um, my apologies uh, as you can see it was ready quite a long time ago um, but I got stuck into something else. So we're going to pick up where we left off which is 
installing CloudFuse. So why am I installing CloudFuse? Well, we can FTP, and we saw in earlier um, videos, that we can FTP files to and from our virtual machines. Um, and indeed, in part three of tutorial six, we'll be looking at CyberDuck and FileZilla, where we can FTP, use an FTP client like those to move files to and from our object storage. But what would be really handy is being able to actually connect from the virtual machine to the object storage and treat it as if it was part of the file system. And that's what CloudFuse is going to allow us to do. So to install CloudFuse is a little bit more work than um, I guess I expected, but certainly it's you know very straightforward. So I'm going to walk us through in this part of the video how you actually do that. So let's go and get the password first of our virtual machine. Here it is, Satisfy3. We'll grab the password and now I'm going to uh, secure shell into, ah, uh, what's the actual IP address, sorry. Uh, let's go back to the device list. And it's 81 I actually want to go yes, but I've completely messed that one up. I actually want to secure shell in as root at. Um, in fact, I'm going to do it on this line. We've taken our password, and there we are. So we're in. So um, what we want to do is we want to do a yum update straight away just to update the packages that are already there. That'll take a couple of seconds. Say yes. Now, once that's all updated, we're going to install wget. Um, and wget is a way of requesting packages from the web. Um, and we're going to need that because we're going to need to link to GitHub and get the CloudFuse uh, tarball so that then we can actually install it. So we're going to yum um, install wget. Oh, it's already installed. That's excellent. Good. Um, so wget's already there. We've now got a few other packages that we want to install. In fact, there's quite a few other packages that I want to make sure we have. Yeah, good. Lib curls on there. Um, Lib curl devel, because you need the development libraries. We're going to have to actually compile um, CloudFuse. Um, we're going to take Fuse. Yep. We got Fuse development libraries. Yep. And lib XML two. You know what I'm going to do? Lib XML to develop at the same time. There we go. Um, we need open SSL. That should be there, yeah. But we need the development, yeah. And then finally, we need a compiler, so we're going to take GCC, yep. And just for safety's sake, I'm going to do a clean of all of this. And I'm going to do a yum update, which should have no updates. Good. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Um, so that's okay. I'm in root. Yeah, that'll be fine. Do I want these files hanging around? I'll tell you what, I'm going to go in the slash tum for this. Yeah, I'm going to make a dir. 
files. I'm going to double you get. This is where we're actually going to go and get the uh, tarball from GitHub. Oh, where was this on GitHub? Um, Redbo Cloud Fuse. I think it's in tarball. Master, yep. Okay, we got that. Yep. Uh, we're going to untar this. Okay. CD into Redbow. And there's a whole lot of files in there. So hopefully, if we've got the right packages now, we can go configure and we won't get any errors fingers crossed good that all looks good Let's have a quick look yeah that all looks good okay now we can make it excellent and now we can install it excellent good that all worked fine um, now we want to go back into the root directory so we're there cd slash um, I now need to put in the actual username and uh, the API key into a CloudFuse file called dot CloudFuse which will hold that information so that then we can actually uh, mount the um, the object storage as if it was a local file system. So I'm going to echo uh, username. So we now want to go back to our object storage. And it was Dallas. There it is, tutorial six. If we view the credentials of this, um, our username is this. So now I'll bring back up our terminal. So that's our username. So we've got the username in there. We now want to echo in the API. Uh, I think it's underscore key. Again, we go back in here, what was the API key, and take that in. But this time, add it to .cloudfuse. If you're not familiar with the Unix commands, uh, a single chevron will create the file and put it in there. If I used a single chevron again, it would overwrite that file, so I'm using doubles. And then lastly, we want to have the authorized URL. If I go back once more, well, let's go through the public one. Okay. And put that in .cloudfuse also. Have a look at CloudFuse. There it is. That all looks good. So now, hopefully, we can CloudFuse and we'll put it on the mount point slash MNT. Fingers crossed. Oop. Ah, I put it in the wrong place. I want to put it in slash root slash CloudFuse so I can move dot. Cloud fuse to slash root slash. Excellent. I have a look at the mount, and there it is. Cloud fuse is on slash MNT. So if I now go to slash MNT and do an LS, there's tutorial six. That's our container, and there's our cyber.png. So that is how you install and configure CloudFuse 
to get it working such that you can mount your object storage directly onto your virtual machine and use it as if it was part of the local file system. Um, one last thing to do, I guess, is why don't we um, just CD. Uh, where am I? Root. Um, let's vi a file here. Let's call it uh, ejk.txt. I'm just going to put some stuff in here. Um, uh, hey there. Just anything at all. And now I'm going to copy as if it was just a straightforward part of the file system to slash mnt slash tutorial 6. And I've just copied a file onto our object storage. So if I slim that down now and we go back to our object storage and I go into tutorial 6, I'm expecting C E J K dot T X T and there it is. So as you can see, we now have object storage mounted onto a virtual machine as if it was part of the local file system, which now makes it very, very usable. Uh, when we get to some of the later tutorials here, we're able to use this facility so that we can have our own version of YouTube, for instance, and we can treat um, the object storage as if it was part of the local file system and have our web server writing and reading from it as if it was just part of the local file system. Join me in part three where I'm going to quickly cover um, getting into this object storage with FileZilla and CyberDuck and I really hope this was useful. Thanks very much.